says this. Who is it that is victorious over, that conquers the world or that system? But he who believes that Jesus is a son of God and who adheres to, trusts in, and relies on that fact. You see, it's belief in action. It's not just going saying you're a believer. It's acting on what you believe. That becomes faith. And so we need to understand in this season, if we believe, we're victorious. Amen? Isn't it good to know that? Isn't God good? Hallelujah. See, y'all are on the winning team. And I'm like kind of the coach to encourage you to just understand that this team is a winning team. We do not back up. We trust in the Lord. Actually, he's all I need if we understand how to get him active and operative in our lives. Amen? Well, turn to somebody and tell them you, you love them, that you're more than a conqueror, that Jesus is all you need, makes everything else right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, brother. God bless you. Praise you. Hallelujah. Man, another one of these beautiful days up here. I know God must love us more than anybody else. <laughs> look where we live. Praise God. And look who your friends are. Did you know what? You can look around. See, your friends are a friend of God. That's what God said. He called you friend. Isn't that good to know? Say, I hang out with the friends of God. Praise God. Well, uh, uh, Clark and, and uh, Dennis and Leonard are all gone to the valley. They got a jump on us. Uh, tomorrow, you know, we're doing Robert Speck's house, and, and we're going to help them out because of what had happened to them. And uh, I'll join them. Uh, with some of my other associates tomorrow. Brother Sam's going to go with me and some. So we're going to go down and Thursday and Friday we're going to knock that job out and they're going to be blessed and they know that there's a God in heaven and there's a God in the earth that flows through men and women. Amen. Well, praise God. Everybody is happy, right? Well, let me see a smile upon your face. Amen. I tell you what, it is wonderful to see all of you. It's wonderful to know. I got a call from Glenda Rambo today from Florida. Some of you know her, some of you don't. She said, there is an awakening taking place, and I feel like God told me that the epicenter is the White Mountains of Arizona. That's what she told me. She said, everything that's coming about is coming out of this place. And, and I believe that. I believe that if we'll just really open our spiritual eyes and trust God that the prophetic words that's been spoken over the White Mountains through prophets all across the country, you will see, but it has to erupt inside of you. You've got to know you're more than a conqueror. You've got to know your faith will overcome anything the world can throw at you. And when we understand that, we got it made. Amen? Everybody say, I got it made. Jesus is my Lord. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Well, uh, I had sent my daughter to get, well, put them in a the basket here. Do you, do you need me? I've been waiting on you sitting right under my nose. <laughs> yeah, just, I know. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to do our declaration. I know of, that you've brought something in to sow. If you haven't brought anything in to sow, we're believing for you to have seed to sow. If I know some of you don't have anything manifested right now, but let me tell you something. We serve the God that will open an opportunity up for you and that he'll bless you with seed to sow. And, and we're believing for that. We're not only believing for a return on the ones that do have seed to sow, but we're believing that God's giving you opportunity to gain seed to sow. Amen? 
So you'll be giving testimony in the very near future how you were sitting here with no seed and all of a sudden God began to open up an opportunity that he'll bless you so you can have seed to sow because I'm going to be talking about seed time and harvest tonight because I, I know y'all don't realize but I used to do some farming. I, was, I raised beef cattle in Texas. We've done everything. There's nothing hardly we haven't done to get from point A to point B to C. But it works. I'll tell you that. We've gained a lot of good experience in that. But one thing we learn is about seed time and harvest. And so tonight I want you to believe for seed so that you can get a big harvest. Amen? So I want to encourage you with that. Well, let's, let's do our declaration, Joyce. You ready? Y'all ready? Is everybody ready? As we give today's offering, we're believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs, businesses and better businesses, raises and bonuses, benefits and sales and commissions, settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money and bills paid off, debts demolished, royalties received, supernatural increase on the investments made, souls for our inheritance, it's offering time. Hallelujah. Bring it on down to the front. That's okay right there. Oh. By the way, we have window decals out at the coffee bar. They're a dollar. All the proceeds goes towards the children's church. So everybody needs a decal. The New Living Church, Lakeside, Arizona. They plastered them all over my car, my wife's car. And uh, so everywhere we go, people get to see we attend the New Living Church. And one thing about it, this is a wild church. As a matter of fact, uh, Vonnie told us that when she was giving testimony the other day that a woman asked her, someone had said, what church you go to? She said, that one up there behind Joy Furniture. She said, you mean the wild church. And uh, it's so much better to be called the wild church than a dead church. And I mean, so many I've been in so dead, I just wouldn't want to, you know, let's be a little wild, okay? Let's let the Holy Spirit just do a little something inside of us. My goodness alive. I mean, we're called, we're supposed, we're called to do supernatural exploits in the name of the Lord. And I'm telling you what, concerned of what's happening, you know, we're, we're concerned about what's happening in the, in the world and the earth. Well, let me tell you something. You've got the power, you've got the authority, and you've got the word and the name to do something about it. And when you begin to move and do something about it, the world thinks you're wild. You're not wild. You're just bringing back into order the very thing that God had called us to bring into order. Amen? So I want to encourage you today. There's nothing being wrong going to the wild church. Uh, we'll get a little momentum picked up, and then if somebody comes in this dead, they'll be moving before they know it and come alive just like Lazarus did. Amen? Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Well, praise God. Well, are the children already gone? Are we, what are we doing with the children tonight? 
nursery and uh, teenagers, all you group, Melissa's there ready to go, so y'all are dismissed. God is good all the time. Man alive. Praise the Lord. His mercy endureth forever. Praise God. I love Psalms 91, don't y'all? You know, I got to thinking about seed time and harvest and about what we've been talking about, about faith and, and uh, declarations and words that we say sometimes that we wished we hadn't have said. And, and uh, I just, uh, I got a little title today just sitting there uh, talking on the phone to someone and, and talking about the soil. You know, the, the heart or spirit of man is the soil in which the word is planted in. And God talks about sowing the seed or the word of the living God in the heart of a man. And people just realize, I mean, they need to realize that you can't just sow any kind of seed and get a good crop. And I, and I, I made the statement today, the soil receives the seed, it does not select the seed. You see, the farmer selects the seed. The soil has to deal with whatever he puts in it. And we need to understand that. And we, we, we have a wrong opinion sometimes about that. And one thing I was thinking about, our thermostat in our house, see, we don't have air conditioning. We only have heating. But our thermostat has a place that says cool on it, but I can put that baby down there to cool all day long and turn the fan on and it never gets cool. Why? The thermostat is only a focus or a hope setter to get something to happen outside and in that other unit. And so I got to thinking, have y'all ever set your thermostat that's actually got air and heat on it and you turn it to cool and turn that baby down when it's 115 outside and shoot that thing down to about 75 and then all of a sudden did you ever hear your thermostat say, no, I'm not going to give you any cool air. I'm going to give you heat for a change. I bet you never heard the thermostat say that, did you? Whatever you set that thermostat on, that's what it's going to give you because electrical current is going to go through that thermostat and affect the true compressor. It's going to com uh, affect your cooling unit and it's going to give you something cool. That's how faith works. The thermostat is your hope setter. You set a goal. You said, I'll need my house from 115 down to 75, and my hope is, is when I sit and turn that knob to 75, it kicks on the compressor, the Freon goes through the A-call, things begin to cool down, and your house begins to come down because you set your target. Did you not? 75. And you know what? You set it. If you've been away and you had your air off and there's 120 in the house, it did not defer you or deter you from cranking that baby to 75. You set your hope and your goal even while the temperature was 120. People have a hard time understanding that about planting seeds and setting goals. They think that it's, it's a lie for you to make a declaration or set a goal whenever it's 120 and you say, my house is always 75. Look at this. You begin to set and then all of a sudden cool air begins to come out. The temperature begins to drop. You it, See, a lot of people think your word, see, you're going to be sowing seeds. I'm going to share with you in just a minute about seed time and harvest, but, but I've got to thinking about that thermostat. It only does and sends a signal for what you tell it to do. The spirit or the heart of man does the same thing. The heart will produce. If, you, if your mouth is loose and wild and no good and, and destructive, your heart the soil is going to grow. It doesn't select the seed. It only produces and receives it after it's sown. That people have been so deceived with their words because it says the sower sows the word, the word of the living God. 
Now the soil that it, it receives, it's either going to receive a good word from God or a negative word or a death word, but the soil, the soil doesn't select it. It receives it and produces a garden of whatever you put in it. So if you're always destructive and destroying and cursing yourself, you'll operate under a curse. Why? Because the soil cannot select the seed you do. The farmer. Do you understand what I'm saying? So what I want to encourage you with tonight, the heart of man's the soil. And we need to understand that the spirit of man is a candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly, Proverbs 20 and 27. Job 22 and 28, I want you to get a hold of this because it's been something not really promoted, taught in the church the way it should it says this, Thou shalt also decree a thing. Now we just made a declaration about our jobs and better jobs and businesses and better businesses. Our God is our source. He's opened my opportunities up. Things are going to happen. That's a decree. Okay, this is Job 22 and 28. Now listen to what it says. Now if you never believed this before, open your thinker up and begin to have an open mind to what I'm reading. This is right out of the word of God. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy, pay, uh, thy ways. It said, if you begin to decree a thing, and if in line with the word of the living God, you not back up on it, faith will begin to rise. It will begin to develop in your heart. Faith will be the outcome, and it's no different from setting the thermostat when it's 120 degrees inside and setting it to 75. If you will walk with faith and patience, eventually it'll get to be 75. What happens a lot of times when we, about seed time and harvest, we begin to plant good seeds. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. Everything I put my hand to prospers. And all of a sudden it's still 120 degrees and so many people not understanding how the law of faith operates, they reach up there and shut the whole thermostat off saying, well, it's still 118 degrees in here. It only dropped two degrees. What's happening? Give it some time. <laughs> Give it... <laughs> Do you understand why? Give it some time. How it says, James, it talks about when uh, the trying of your faith work is patience. When patience is finds its perfect work, you find yourself wanting nothing. That means your faith is coupled up with your patience. You've sown the seed. You set the thermostat on the right deal. The word's coming forth. Even when it's still 120, even when you have nothing, even when sickness is ravaging your body, even when your family's torn up, you begin to declare peace. You can be, begin to declare a coming together. You de begin to declare that your God is pulling you together. You, did, you got a covenant right and you begin to make decrees that your God has already provided all this and you'll not back off on it. You're going to keep right on there. You're going to keep looking at the hope. The thermostat says 75. The natural temperature says 120. I thank you, Father. This thing's giving me 75 degrees in my house. This is giving me peace with my family. This is giving me provision. This is giving me an opportunity. This is coming about on the things of God. I have the I, I walk in the blessing of Abraham. I have a covenant in its mind, and I'll not back off on it. I don't care how hot it gets. <laughs> Amen. So what I'm saying is this. I want, I, I want you to understand. The thermostat itself has no substance in it. Your hope has no substance in it. The thermostat is the hope or the goal setter. But until you're ready to flip the button on, set that hope up, and then begin to let it take the time, it'll send a signal down to the unit that it takes to bring about coolness in your room. Same way with words, the faith words, the word of the living God. If you'll keep putting word in the, in the heart, in the soul of man, you will be, and you won't cast it away. I know some of you is in hard times right now. I know you are. This is when you should say, I've sown, I receive. 
I walk in obedience. I walk in the goodness of God. This, this life is mine because God gave it to me. I will walk by faith, not by sight. I will not be discouraged. Lord God, I look to you for my encouragement. I can't look maybe to a man. I can't maybe look to a woman. But I can look to the supernatural provision of God to encourage me on every front. You see, because it's our God that puts me over. I take the shield of faith. I quench every fiery dart of the wicked one that he brings against me, according to Ephesians 6. I will not back up, and I will not let my face shield down. You understand what I'm saying? Just think of this. I was reading and thinking and about this thermostat because I walked in there. It was so hot in my house, I thought, maybe I missed it. Maybe I got air conditioning. I actually put the thing on cool, and it didn't get any cooler. But just think if you're from India, and we've been there a few times, and a lot of people live in little lean-to shacks with a corrugated, rusted, you know, tin top on it and some toe sacks on the side. Reckon if they came to your house, and all of a sudden it was 120 degrees when you walked in, and they saw you reach up there and turn that thermostat to 75 degrees, and all of a sudden your house cools down, and they go down and buy them a thermostat and put them in their shack. It'll never get cool because there is no substance in the thermostat. The substance is in your faith. You can read the Bible until you're blue in the face. Unless you act on it by faith, it will never produce nothing. Oh, I'm sorry I'm hollering again. Calm me down, Lord. Faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen yet. In Hebrews 11.1, 1, we need to get a hold of this because so many of us have a thermostat and we don't have a clue how to turn it on. There's no substance in the hope. It's only as faith gives its substance that it will work. And it, faith takes action, working, looking, seeing, believing, and saying, my God provides all my needs according to his riches and glory by my Christ Jesus. It ain't even according to my natural strength. It's not according to my hand. If you will put your hand to what he says, his supernatural increase will come to you. But you need to believe it. Amen? So a little box on the wall won't get the job done. You see, hope makes demand by being spoken. I want, I want to get over this because I, I, I'm, I've got so many notes, I'm not going to be able to get through it. I want to go right here. Genesis 8 and 22. Actually, Luke 17, 6 says, If you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say. You might say. He said, If you believed in God, you might begin to say, I'm healed. If you had gra That's what he said right there. You might say... If you're lonely, you might say, Jesus is bringing friends that I need, not friends I don't need. I'm not lonely anymore. I'm not going to get caught up in that thing. So my God says, I might say, I am popular with the men. No, not me. <laughs> Lord, forgive me. I'm saying, what I'm saying, maybe, well, a lot of the, y'all know what I'm saying. It seems like that, Sometimes there's single women in the church that needs a godly man. And sometimes they make mistakes. So I want you to start saying that godly men will come across my path. I will not accept anything short of God's man for me. I believe right now I will let faith say that God has a perfect man for all you women that need a man. And I declare right now in Jesus' name that he'll come to you. You'll know it by the Spirit of the living God, and there will be no lust involved in it. You say, are you taking all the fun out of it? No. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're putting longevity in it. While the earth remaineth, there will be seed time and harvest. 
There will be cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. That's Genesis 8 and 22. The Bible keeps referring to sowing and reaping. Sowing and reaping. It even says in Galatians, says God's not a liar. He will not be mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, he shall reap. Doesn't that speak to you? Doesn't that say something to you? Quit trying to override the cycle. You will not be able to do it because you've got to get your sewing right. I mean, in Texas, I, I, I worked from 10 years old up. I started driving a hay truck at 10 years old. I've worked all my life, which I, I counted a blessing. And, and the thing about it is, my granddad, I'd go out there and get on that old tractor with that old planter on it and everything, and in one field he'd plant corn. I never went out there, and then in the fall I'd go out there and walk behind the trailer, one of them old four-wheel trailers, and two rows would be coming out from under the trailer, and you'd, you'd uh, pull the ears of corn off the stalk. And you know what? When we planted that corn, we planted corn seed in the ground. I never come by under that trailer gathering that corn in the fall and picking cucumbers. There was never a cucumber come out from under the trailer. There was not ever a squash came out under the trailer. It was always corn. And what happens with men and women, they think their mouth can just slobber out anything and it's going to plant something in the human heart, in the soil. The soil cannot select the seed and you're going to get a crop you don't like. You're going to think you're going to get corn and you're going to get some cucumbers that's all sour in your life because you planted cucumbers, not corn. I never got a cucumber out of a corn seed, but I'll guarantee you this. See, the hope of the farmer is the seed. The hope for the believer is the seed. And it's been massed so bad and talked against so bad, not understanding that when you begin to make declarations with the word of God being your seed, it will go into your heart and your heart will produce faith because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. It will produce faith. It will not produce doubt. It will not produce fear. The word of God in your heart will produce faith. Now what happens is we think God will just override the seed time and harvest law. He will not override it. It will not be overridden by anything that you do or you say, well, God will forgive me for that. God will forgive you, but you'll still get a horrible garden. I mean, my Lord, who wants to eat cucumbers all the time? I like them roast ears, uh, Taylor Carn cooked right, and uh, come in there with that butter dripping off of it, running down your elbows, off your elbow, getting that stuff inside your teeth, and when you smile, you look like you got corn everywhere. I don't want cucumbers all the time. I want something good to eat, and if you want something good to eat, learn about seed time and harvest, learn about decrees, and get your decree and your talking right, and begin to declare, your God puts you over. Your God is behind you. Your God's in healing you. Your God's not holding anything against you. The blood of Jesus has delivered you. Amen? So the, the heart or the land does not select the seed. The farmer does. The heart will produce whatever's put in it. And it produces both ways. I wish God would have made it a little different. But I guess he's smarter than I am. Whatsoever a man thinketh, whatever's coming out of your mouth, whatever you're dwelling on, that's the garden you're going to get. And I'm here to encourage you to plant good seed because you've got good soil. You've got the recreated human spirit where God lives to plant good seed in and don't let your past rob you anymore. Begin to stand up and make declarations. Your God puts you over. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things. 
An evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. I'm convinced from what Jesus taught that even a person who is born again could put evil things in his heart. The church is full of it. Well-meaning people never been challenged to the point that we put a guard on our tongue. We put a guard on our mouth. It, it, guard what you hear in your ear gate going into your spirit. Man, don't let it be there. Don't let horrible stuff. He said, guard your heart for out of it are the issues of life. How do you guard it? With what seed you put inside your ear gate. I mean, the discourager comes. He is a discourager. He has no authority over your life. He has no power over you. He only can try to discourage. And he can discourage through a, 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 maybe through a virus, maybe through an infection, maybe through a heart that's failing, maybe through some other kind of problem. But that's just to discourage you and get your seed sowing turned around by saying, I thought I was healed. Bad seed. Good seed. I remember the day I received revelation about healing. By the stripes of Jesus Christ, I'm healed. I received my healing, you know, August the 23rd, 2010, and no devil's going to convince me anything else is but the healing power of God is in my body. That's good seed. That builds faith. What does faith do? It overcomes worldly thinking. It overcomes the enemy in his thought pattern trying to discourage you and make you think less than what God's created you to be. He wants you to think you're, gonna, you're too old now. You'll never pull out. You're done. Your finances is down. Your wife's gone. This has happened. Your husband gone. Let me tell you something. God is an instantaneous God too. He's one that when the minute you receive the seed, the minute you receive faith from the word of the living God, that's the day victory comes. It's not the manifestation that you walk out. Patience had to take over. But you know your word is true. So we need to understand that if any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is in vain. And how do you bridle your, your tongue? With the word of the living God. Let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. Only that that would edify and build up and bring spiritual life to those that hear it. Ephesians 4, 29 through 30. Listen, let me tell you something. The word of the living God has to be real to you. The seed, you have the garden in your heart. You need to understand that you set the course with your own mouth. You set the course. Remember, I, I've said it many times. The, the, the ultimate law is believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth to salvation. Believe in your heart. Confess the covenant rights to provision in your life and your families. You understand what I'm saying? I want you to. Faith. If you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say, I know some people probably thought I was lying when I told that guy in England that my father was rich. I didn't have quite enough money yet to lease the house. We just got over there. I was just speaking on a spiritual level. I said, my father is rich. There might have been a little delay, I said, in the transfer of the funds, but I'll tell you this, it will come. And you know what? It did, and it's keep coming. When it was time to pay the full amount of the lease, I had it. Why? My God released it because of faith. Now listen to me. People think the mercy of God gets that done. No, the mercy of God will keep you alive while you're learning how to walk by faith. <laughs> the mercy of God will keep you alive while you're learning to walk by faith. Your faith overcomes the world system. He didn't say... My mercy overcomes the world system. He said, if you get yourself in trouble, run into my throne room. You'll find grace and mercy in time of need. But the reason he wants you to run in the throne room is to learn how to walk by faith. He'll protect you. He'll try to keep you afloat. But he said, the just must walk by faith. Quit 
sowing the wrong seeds in your garden because you're going to get a wrong crop. Right now, we need a high-protein crop. <laughs> we need to build some spiritual muscles, man. And, and, and I'll tell you what, if we will understand what I'm talking about is not elementary. People say, well, he's talking about this again. Let me tell you something. You might already get a hold of what I'm talking about because there's a big deficit in the church today because they come, they listen a little bit, they go home, never apply. Never apply. Let me tell you something. If you'll get a hold to application, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, anybody in here a believer? Well, then say, I got faith as a grain of mustard seed. And I will say, my God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. No weapon formed against me will prosper. My God calls me friend. My God said the righteous will never beg bread. You see, what happened because of timidity and being trained the wrong way, it's even hard for some good Christians to start making declarations like that because they don't know if they should or not. Let me tell you what. Go back over here. Let me get this one. Thou shalt also decree a thing. Now, everybody that likes to be poor likes to use Job as an example. And that is another fallacy. Job was the richest man in the East. After he opened his mouth and sowed seeds of destruction in his own life because it says, Job said this, The thing which I feared the most has come upon me. He sowed a seed of fear in his life that cost him all of his children. It cost him family. People laughed at him. It cost him his wealth. But because he caught himself, turned around, came back to sow garden of success in his life, he began to understand that when he sowed the seeds of victory, he would come out victorious. And when he, after seven months, I believe it was, that he had lost everything, it came back, and he had two or three times more than than he ever had before. So I don't like people use Job on me. I'll turn it around and use it on you. The reason I'm saying, Job saw what he did wrong. The thing I have feared, I was out of faith. I wasn't trusting my God. I prayed and wrestled with God about my children every day. I didn't get in faith to get them delivered and set free. I didn't set them before God and leave them there. I didn't set them there and say, my God, I know I have a covenant with you. I thank you right now. I will never fret over my kids again. I will only give you praise that they're saved, they're set free, sanctified, understand the word of the living God, and I praise you for that because that's my decree. So thou shalt also, the new living church shall also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon thy path and you'll not stumble. You'll stand strong because you're beginning to get the, the idea, the law down of sowing and reaping, seed time and harvest, sowing in your own heart the word of the living God. For faith comes by hearing the word of the living God. Amen? I like this. Everybody here, now, we're talking about mankind so the women can say this too. Say this. I'm a good man. Mankind. I'm a good man. And out of my heart flows good treasure. No evil will come near me. I will not allow it. I will not speak it. Only that thing which my God says, I will allow into my heart. Thus I will allow out of my mouth. See, what gets in the heart will come out of the mouth. You can't help it. It always does. So, 
The soil never argues with the planter or the farmer. It just takes what is given. Did you know that? The soil is not going to say, now, now, come on, Richard. You know you're not going to drop over dead today. Why did you say that? Should you just, people use terms that just make me cringe. You know, oh, man, you know, don't use those terms. Use God's terms. I, I, I know at my age that I'm younger than most men 25 years old. But I know why. Because nearly 40 years, and then before that, my mother and daddy, but when I got a hold of the message, I've been declaring how healthy and good-looking I am. No, now don't go thinking I'm prideful. I had a guy tell me the other day, pride was my problem. I said, if that's the only problem I had, I'd be doing pretty good. But what I'm saying is this. Is it, it's not... I just, I'm not being prideful. I, I am being confident that my God, after 40 or 50 years, is beginning to show up in my life because I planted seeds of faith. I've taught faith for 35 years. And, and you know what? Most people want some in depth theological sermon. Faith is simple read, believe. Receive, speak it forth, let it come back. Put actions to your word. Don't back up and stand up and give God the glory for it. You see what I mean? That's faith. It begins to come. It's alive. But Saul never argues. The soil never argues about the seed. I was thinking about in our, our neighbor's garden. Uh, they bring us stuff all the time, great big squash and stuff. And I've never had Marilyn one time said, well, I went out there and scratched my head. I planted a bunch of watermelon seed, and did you know what? Gourds started growing. Gourds come off them vines. They've not one time planted one seed. He said, and they've got a little little rose at the end. They've got the little seed pitcher on them with, on that little deal telling what's in that row. And there's not anything above ground early in the year. You just have to go out there and say, oh, that's squash. And they say, well, how can you tell? Well, they planted the seed. And that little sign there tells me, the book says, my God shall supply all your needs. That's the little sign at the end of the row when there's nothing above ground. And I say, oh, I can't hardly wait till the harvest comes. And then them big old beefsteak tomatoes. My Lord. And there ain't nothing there but... Dirt, and, and there's a little sign that said there, beefsteak tomatoes. And I'm thinking, that's what my book says in the covenant. I've got my hope in the ground. i got the seed there. All I can see is a written word. I'm getting a picture of what I'm seeing. I'm seeing that someday, not very long, if I'll keep watering this, I'll build a little fertilizer on it. I'll pray over I won't let the varmints come in and get it. I'll put the fence around They planted a big fence around this stuff so the varmints couldn't come in and eat it. And all of a sudden, one day, Berlin walks over and says, there's a beefsteak. I said, man, I've been believing for that all this time. I know it seems simple, it seems funny, but it's exactly the way the word of God and the kingdom of God operates. In Luke, it talks about the farm. It says faith is a servant to the believer. You got a servant that will work for you, but you got to know how to work the servant. The servant, oh, right there, and you walk along. And I, y'all all have gardens, some of you. You walk along. That's that kind of light-colored, lemon-looking tomatoes. When they come off, they're small, and they're kind of yellow-looking. So how can you tell? Well, I planted the seed. I've got the little sign at the end. I can see the picture. I know what they're going to look like when they come above ground. And then i got the beef steaks right there. Look how beautiful they are with a great big picture of that beef steak right on the seed, you know, the sack. And then right here in this line, I've got zucchini squash. It's going to grow three foot long. How can you tell? Because I spoke over them. I watered it every day, and I put special fertilizer on it. 
And you, somebody that don't know nothing about farming or gardening, they'll come by and say, is this guy lost his mind? He's talking about, and his mouth's drooling. He's spitting nearly on the, on the rows there, thinking about them fresh garden tomatoes. I, I used, we had an acre uh, at the house, and Daddy and Mama always would plant a big garden, and I'd go out there and them little tomatoes. I, that was one of my favorite meals. I'd come in from school. I didn't go in the house. I went right to the garden. When them babies was out there, I ate them right off the vine. I just wipe them off a little, pop them in. You know, you can get about 20 of them down quick for mother to catch you. <laughs> so what I'm saying is this. If we could look at faith the same way, put some seeds. What do you need in your life? Do you need a job? Do you need provision? Do you need peace? Do you need salvation? What do you need today? Then tonight, let's plant a seed, then get the word on it, and let that word be the little sign at the end of the row and said, I planted a seed. September the 7th, 2011. I put that seed in the ground, son. I remember, son, that I've believed for your salvation. September the 7th, 2011. I put the seed in the ground, and I've got the word up here, and I'm going to keep it before me right on my refrigerator, and every time I see it, that it's God's will for all men to be saved and I prayed that you would be saved and I prayed and put people past your, your, uh, your way every day that would present the gospel to you and I thank you. I couldn't see it for a long time. Nothing came above the ground for two or three years but Father God, I thank you the seed's there and then you're saying, Son, I thank God that the seed of multiplication and the seed work, the seed of faith it overcome everything that was trying to rob you of your rightful place with God. But people want to see the stalk before they plant the seed. You got to plant the seed and believe it for anything comes up and you got to go out there. Remember that movie we watched, The Faith of Potatoes? We might ought to watch that again. But what I'm saying is this. We need to begin to say that those things that we sow will come to pass because the saying is the sowing. People have a hard time buying in to the unseen world. The unseen world is governed by faith and it's governed by your words. Now, I think God let me be involved in the sales world for 45, 50 years alongside of the church world because you can take unsaved men and these laws will work. But you take a saved man and he'll have good success and they'll work even greater. It's like having a cucumber in Texas and one in Israel. You know, when Israel, when the land came back, they grew vegetables bigger than any place I've ever seen. I saw them on TV, how big they were. Why? I think it was just some fertile ground that God said, I'm going to prove that my Bible is true. When Israel comes back, I'm going to show people how to grow some vegetables. When we come back to faith, God's going to say, I'm going to show them how to grow some vegetables. I'm going to show them how to grow up and do some things and trust me. And I'm telling you, when you do it, it will not back up. The goal is to be set on removing the mountain of tremendous problems you face. Your hope then will cause you to aspire to a new deal. I even, you know, uh, down in the valley, it's so hot, some of y'all know that. And I try not to go anymore. But think of the load it puts on an air conditioner whenever it's 118. When I, I was down there last Thursday on the roof, is 118 normal, you know, in the temperature. On the roof is about 200. And I was just thinking, I wonder how hot it is inside. We'd put a new air conditioner on for him. Walked inside, and it was very comfortable. And did you know what? The only thing the thermostat did was give a, a target for the outside unit to try to reach. Your hope just gives you a target for your faith to reach. That's why no longer can we just hope and pray. We hope in faith. And we begin to declare, no evil will befall me. Neither shall any plung, uh, uh, plague come near my dwelling. 
For the Lord has given his angels charge over me, and they keep me in all my ways, and in my pathway is life, and there is no death. Psalms 91 in Proverbs 12, 28. I am a doer. This is what we need to begin to do with our mouth. I am a doer of the word. This is, this is James 1, 22. I am a doer of the word of God, and I am blessed in my deeds. I am happy in those things which I do because I am a doer of the word of God. I'm teaching you how to sow a seed. Some of you need to be like those Orthodox Jews that wears Isaiah, the scroll, on their face and roll them down like you. <laughs> you know, they, they keep that before their eyes. All if, I don't know it wouldn't be good to have some of these declarations up there, walk around with a little headband, have them hanging out. I bet it would cause some people to look at you down at Home Depot or Lowe's. <laughs> you know, you don't have to wear the hat. Just wear a headband. I take the shield of faith. Do you realize that you have to take the shield of faith to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one? He keeps coming because he's been stripped. He knows he has no authority, but if he can make you think he does, then you lay down the gauntlet. You lay down the shield. I talked to somebody today that they're discouraged. They just said, I don't, I just, I don't, I don't want to hear it. Well, you need to hear it. When you don't want to hear it, it's when you need to hear it the most. Christ, every one of you, I want you to receive this. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly. In the name of Jesus, every organ and every tissue of this body functions in the perfection to which God created it to. I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, according to Galatians, Romans, and, and Genesis, and Matthew. I am an overcomer, and I overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. I am submitted to God. Everybody say this, I am submitted to God. And the devil flees from me because I resist him in the name of Jesus. Okay, now I want you to get a hold of this and we're going to end. But I want to get some seeds inside of you that need finance and material blessing. We've been taught too much, you know, it's a spiritual thing. All spiritual law govern natural law. Spiritual truth supersedes, supersedes natural truth. Natural truth, cancer in the body, spiritual truth, healing's already come. Amen? For poverty, he has given me wealth. For sickness, he has given me health. For death, he has given me eternal life. It is true unto me according to the word of the living God. I delight myself in the Lord. Everybody say that. I delight myself in the Lord. And he gives me the desires of my heart. I always have to explain that. He will give you the desire and then fulfill it. You understand that? I have given and it is given unto me. Let's say it. I have given and it is given unto me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, men will give into my bosom. Transfer of wealth. Coming this week. In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. 
Amen. With what measure I meet out or measure out, it is measured unto me. And I got a great big scoop. Everybody said, whatever I measure out, the measure I measure out is measured back to me. And I got a great big scoop. I sow bountifully, therefore I reap bountifully. I give cheerfully. And my God has made all grace abound toward me. And I, having all sufficiency for all things, do abound to do all good works. I'm telling you, these are seeds that's got to be in our heart. You say, well, that's just words. It's not just words. It's the power of the universe that God put into being. Let's say this. And I know some of you think you've got to understand we're talking about spiritual law that starts in motion the faith in your heart to complete the declaration or decree, you say. You understand that? Let's say this. There is no lack... For my God supplieth all my needs according to his riches by Christ Jesus in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I do not want. Because Jesus was made poor, it says. Say, because Jesus was made poor. That I through his poverty might have abundance. For he came that I might have life and have it more abundantly. And let's say this, and I, having received abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, do reign as a king in life by Christ Jesus. Okay, the Lord... That's Lord, y'all. You'll know what I'm saying. L O R D. The Lord, the Lord has, pleasure has pleasure in the prosperity, in the prosperity of, his of his servant. And Abraham's blessing Abraham's are, mine. are mine. I see God now, see God. All, excited, all excited, causing blessing to flow to me in Jesus' name. Well, I could go on, but it's 10 to 8. If I was you, I'd get me a bunch of declarations that put you over and start every morning when the enemy comes in. You wake your eyes up. You make a choice. We was in a place today, and uh, we had to make about 10 choices in about two minutes. I preached a message on Red Lobster one time. Went into Red Lobster. And uh, this was back when they had smoking. They said, non-smoking or smoking? I said, I mean, when you get in the door. First of all, how many? Four. Smoking or non-smoking? Non-smoking. Come this way. Sit down. Is this okay? Table or booth? Table. Sit down. What would you like to drink? We have coffee, tea, Lemonade, Coke, Dr. Pepper, Fresca. What would you like to drink? Dr. Pepper. Then all of a sudden they said, well, would you like an appetizer? We've got stuffed crab. We've got shrimp. We've got garlic shrimp. We've got coconut shrimp. We've got calamari. We've got all this up. What would you like? Let me have some of that coconut shrimp, please. And then all of a sudden we ain't even got to the main course. We ain't even got down to whether you want them buttered up biscuits they bring out there, about 5,000 calories per biscuit. I said, bring some of them. <laughs> what I'm saying, we got to learn quickly how to make choices in life, and our words or the seeds we put inside of us should be thought about through the Word of God so we plant the right seed through the choice we make. And so when we understand how elementary it seems, but how 
grand it is when we get a hold of the law of faith. The law of seed, time, and harvest. It's tremendous. Remember, God will love you, but he can't change the law of seed, time, and harvest. He can't change the law for you or anyone else of sowing and reaping. The only one that can change it if you've been sowing the wrong thing is repentance. Get before God, get in the word, and begin to sow new seeds, and you will get results right away. First of all, you'll get a peace. You'll quit feeling condemned. You'll rise to a new place with God. And then God will come by his spirit and begin to encourage you. My word will work. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. The whole world can go away. The skies can vanish, but my word will never vanish. It will never lose its power. You say, well, why are you? Because I'm convinced that we curse ourselves. Just like Job. He got to the place there in verse 20, uh, chapter 22. Whatsoever a man will decree, he'll have it. Good are bad. Make sure life and death set before you. Life and death in the power of the tongue. Choose life. You see, we got to do it, guys. And it didn't say if everything's okay. It's why you can't see any seed above the ground and you're hungry and your mouth is watering and your family's going a little bit hungry. You say, my seed's in that ground. I'm not pulling it up. I'm not doubting. I believe my God. My covenant rights are right. I'm not back up. My God supplies all my needs because I walk in obedience to my God. Amen. We need it, guys. We need everyone in this house prospering. Why? Because you're going to have neighbors that's not. You're going to have family that's not. We've got to get a hold of this law and make sure we're not jeopardizing it and let it work for us. Because it'll work for anyone that will work it. I remember in Texas and being in Louisiana and Alabama and Florida, all them farmers look different. Some of them wear cowboy boots, some of them wear old coveralls, some of them. But do you know what? Every one of them, if they planted a corn seed and watered it, they got corn. Didn't make any difference what they looked like, what state they lived in. Didn't make any difference what tractor they had. Didn't make any difference one of them huge John Deere's that would plow 48 rows at one time or an old farm farm all that would plow one. They would still get a corn stalk with corn if they planted corn no matter what they looked like. You will get good results no matter what your background is, no matter where you come from, no matter what it looks like your faith, if you will begin to plant the word of God in your life and make decrees. When it looks like the guillotine's fixing a snout, said, I shall survive. My God puts me over. No weapon formed against me will prosper. I stand strong. He'll deliver you and set you free. You know why? Romans 1.16 said, We are not ashamed of the gospel, for it's for the power of God and the salvation. And in the Amplified, it says, For your deliverance unto eternal life. So it works on every, every layer. Romans 10, 8, 9, and 10 talks about salvation faith. James and Ephesians and different one talks about operational faith. I take it that every person in here is born again. Is everybody in here born again? Everybody knows the Lord. Everybody knows the Lord. Do you guys know the Lord? I don't know y'all. I just asked you. So if you know the Lord, you've got through the threshold of salvation faith. And that's where most people stop. But it says in Ephesians, those people that produce great fruit bring great glory to God, and you'll only do that through operational faith, learning how to stretch your limits through God. That's why I like to stretch my limits. 
God's put something inside of me. I'm not satisfied unless we're stretching the limits. We gotta stretch like Abraham. Get them tent flaps out there. Tighten the cards. Get your vision bigger. Believe God to get out of your situation. And you know what? If you do, you'll walk out. You will walk out in Jesus Christ's holy name. Father God, I pray that the wisdom of God, the revelation of the word come alive. I pray that, Father, every time this week, every minute, every hour of the day, if we start to open our mouth to speak a curse, that we'll be caught and our tongue will come in subjection to the Holy Spirit and we will begin to declare, my God puts me over. My God is my supply. My God is my healer. My God is my joy. My God is my peace. I will not look anywhere else for it. And I thank you, Father, tonight that the anointing of the living God flows forth in Jesus' name. And that this church will not only be known as a wild church, but one that stands firm on the word of the living God that does not back up, that supernatural miracles flow because of the seeds that's been planted and the word of God will not fail in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, praise God, I love you. I tell you what, God's good, isn't he? Give him some praise. Hallelujah.